Good morning everyone and welcome to RK Adventures with me Richie and me Kaylee and today we're here at Flamingo Land yeah second time here yeah so we're at Flamingo Land which is in North Yorkshire um, I haven't been here for years but Katie came earlier in the summer so hopefully it'll be a really good day we've got some of the rides and um, have a look around the zoo that's here as well mm -hmm. and hopefully see if we can take in some of the shows so yeah. join us as we have a look around Flamingo Land and we and a good thing is about this we've asked for permission to film and we can yeah so we should have some on-ride footage for you guys as well so stay tuned for that and we'll see you inside So with a lot of the rides here at Flamingo Land, they are on a limited opening. So the first ride we're going to do today is Hero. And this ride is open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if you are coming, just be aware that some of the rides do shut early and some of the other rides don't open until later. And it's just started up. We'll send a couple of test cars around and then we'll get on. Yeah, so let's go on Hero, which is the park's Zamperla Volair. Supposedly one of the roughest courses in the UK, but it should be good fun. And we'll take you guys on with the GoPro. Right, so we just had our ride on Hero, which is the park's Zampel while there. Um, yeah, open 2013. A little bit on the rough side on your shoulders. Yeah. So, yeah, it's got a very sort of unique train system where you have to sort of essentially climb into it yeah. and then get held in. So yeah, it's not actually possible, I don't think, to get the GoPro on there uh, without sort of either killing myself or getting no footage whatsoever. But yeah, yeah. it's a good ride. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to be a little bit sore from that for the rest of the day and probably tomorrow. But yeah, what do you think, Katie? What do you give it oh, out of 10? I thought it was um, really good. I'm probably going to an eight. An eight? Yeah, we have to be quick because yeah. Mumbo Jumbo is going to go up the lift hill. Yeah, so I'd probably give it a six. Um, okay. It's a good ride, but I'm not in any rush to go on it again. But yeah, so up next we're going to have Mumbo a look Jumbo. on Mumbo Jumbo. <laughs> it and was the world's steepest hill, but now it's not. Yeah, it was the world's uh, steepest drop back when it first opened. But yeah, we'll take you guys along and see what it's like. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately this is a little bit uh, outdated, but back in 2009 when it opened, it was the world's steepest coaster. Yeah. What are you doing? 
yeah, so there we go. That was uh, Mumbo Jumbo. Made by SNS, opening in 2009. Yeah, so as you can see there, we just had our ride on Mumbo Jumbo. What did you think, Ellie? I thought it was really good. I could feel it go upside down. Yeah. Like dangling. Yeah, there's quite a bit of a bit of track where you're actually just hung upside down, so quite a bit of hang time. <laughs> really good. Uh, made by SNS in 2009. Really good ride. Mm -hmm. I would give it maybe a 7 out of 10. Because, yeah, the the restraints aren't the most comfortable. Yeah. Um, especially with the sort of the headrest end up like sort of having to look down rather than being able to look forward but yeah other than that really good ride what do you think Katie? um i think the same thing for it eight an eight yes. eight out of ten brilliant so i think up next we're going to Come go on, on kamali which is the park's slc so we'll see you guys over there So we just had our ride there on Kumali, which is the park's SLC roller coaster from uh, Vakoma. Uh, it stands for Steel Loop and Coaster, if anybody's wondering. Yeah, opened in 2006. What did you think, Kelly? I thought it was really good. It definitely wasn't as smooth as it seems. It's only when um, you go over loop and it's not straight, it's when it curls. That's the rough bit. Yeah, so it's actually surprisingly smooth for an SLC. Um, they've got a bit of a reputation for being a bit rough. But yeah, the pattern on the side of the seats and the ears is actually quite soft, so yeah, yeah. really good. Uh, we do apologise for the sound in the background. There's currently train. a train. How many theme parks have we been to where there's a train? Yeah. Oh. It's a, a staple of most theme parks having a train ride. Um, so, yeah, we'll uh, yeah. probably have a look on there later on. Have a look around the zoo, see where it goes. But, uh, 
So yeah, I think we'll have a wander down and uh, maybe have a go on the chair swings over there in the distance. Might be a bit cold up there, but we'll take you guys along. And the footage, it might be a bit windy. We should hopefully get uh, some good views across the park as well. So we walk down now into the dinosaur area. Some uh, quite good theme around here, so there's uh, a nice skeleton. Pigeon. So uh, Possibly a Triceratops Rex, I'm not too sure. And some nice open grassy areas. Pterodactyl over there. And the chair swing. And the chair swing that we're about to go on. And also this. There's also a mini Ferris wheel there, called wagons. Not too sure how that fits in with dinosaurs, but uh, still, it's nice. There's a little go get a coaster over there, which uh, fortunately isn't open today. Um, yeah, really good. We'll have a bit more of a wander around, and then we'll go on the chair swing. Oh, who's this fella, Kelly? This is uh, this is the Allosaurus. All the time, these bees lived. They were the top of the food chain and stone cold killing machines. Built for a speed on the two powerful legs, combined with a massive deadly claw oh, and a full set of teeth. The Allosaurus. I can't say it now. Allosaurus was without question the deadliest carnivore of its time. So it's basically a Tyrannosaur, a T-Rex mixed with a Velociraptor. Mm. I would say it's that. Yeah, it looks towards the back end of the Jurassic period. And what? With 4.5 tons. Uh -huh. And a height of 3 metres. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like so yeah. Like really good. You can actually learn things here as well. So yeah. Really interesting. There's a little sensor there which uh, sets off the animatronic. Looks like he might have lost his tongue though. Yeah, and he's got a big cut. Yeah, uh, his tongue seems to have fallen off. <laughs> a little bit of a floppy arm. But still, really good. Nice bit of theming. Yeah, so it's quite a quiet day here at uh, Flamingoland, thankfully. So yeah, we're going on Pterodactyl. Looks like there's nobody else in the queue. Yeah, there's plenty of... Uh, hand sanitizer stations around here and also markings on the floor. Mm -hmm. Some of them are a little bit faded, could do with a repaint. Yeah. But yeah, it's good to see most people are following them out the Kelly. Yeah. So yeah. Masks aren't required on the ride, but they are required in all the indoor areas. Well, let's show the top. So let's go for a ride on Terror Dactyl. I don't want to look on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Dino Dig. So let's go and have a look, Kelly. So what do you think this is, Kelly? Uh, I think it's uh, a fossil dig, but with fake fossils. Yeah, let's have a look. There's no bushes. Uh, so yeah, it's just a, a sand pit where you can uh, examine some of these fossils that are hidden here. I think there's meant to be two of Not totally sure if this area is open or not, because there's nothing to actually excavate the fossils with, but uh, we'll have a little look down anyway and just see what it's like. Oh, 
Yeah. So there's a bone of a dinosaur here and oh, some litter. It's always nice. Let's see what this guy looks like. Oh, he doesn't look very well. But yeah, I think there's supposed to be uh, some tools that you can use here, so little uh, shovels and brushes and things to expose the bones, but there's nothing here at the moment. Could be due to social distancing rules and things like that. We'll see everybody touching the same, the same things. The fossil here. Skull buried here in the sand. So okay, he's got some sharp teeth. Yeah. Nice big uh, bone structure there. Very um, Disney Animal Kingdom esque. Where are we going next, Kelly? We're going on the spinning coaster. First, I'm going to tell you a bit about the Brachiosaurus. 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 So, what do we know about the Brachiosaurus, Kelly? So its nickname was the armed lizard. One great family of dinosaurs called sauropods. I really don't know what that says. <laughs> sauropods. Sauropods that dominated the Jurassic period in history. The, the Titans could live to over a hundred years old and were among the largest animals that would ever walk the planet. By being such a great size, they always had to produce about a ton of dino poo each day. Oh, a ton of dino poo each day. Oh, I wouldn't like to have to clean that up. I know. It looks like a Spinosaurus. A Spinosaurus from the Cretaceous yeah. period. She's hiding there in the bushes. Bobby doesn't see us. This is a little bit about the Spinosaurus. The nickname was Spine Lizard. The Spine Lizard? Uh-huh. These creatures were huge, even bigger than the T-Rex. They're the biggest killers that have ever walked on Earth. Apart from their huge claws and the crocodile-like snout, their main feature was the ginormous scale that came out from their spine. This is believed to have many uses, such as ear to heating and cooling themselves, as a way of communication by flushing pigment throughout it, and a simple way of making them look even more big and scary to other dinosaurs. The diet of them was most certainly a meat eater, but the majority of their hun hunger Hunting. Hunting, sorry, is water. Taking fuel advantage of the rivers, plentiful resources. They are said to have a, hu a hunted similar to a grizzly bear by standing on their back two legs and pouncing on the prey from above. Yeah, so up next we're going to have a ride on Twistosaurus, Zampella's spinning course there. It's really good fun, we'll take you guys along for a ride. Hopefully we'll get some good spinning action. It is an interesting fact, it also holds a world record. But not for the ride itself. It's the oldest person to ride a roller coaster is Jack Reynolds. He rode the Twistosaurus aged 105 years old in zero days, so it must have been on his birthday. Lucky guy. Well, I'm uh, still riding roller coasters, but I'm only that age. Uh, yep. Let's get in the queue and we'll take you guys along on the Twistosaurus. Yep, don't forget your hand sanitizer. Yep. I only like two of these ones. Very watery. Yeah, it's very watery, isn't it?
your safety, please remain seated and keep your arms and legs inside the carriage. Just lean. Just lean. Second lap. So there we just had our ride on Twistosaurus and up next we're going to go on Cyclosaurus. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it's looks, called. Yeah, it looks um, really fun. So yeah, we'll take you guys along. Yeah, so you take these little carriages and you have to pedal. And that'll make you rise and fall. I think I have to sit on the inside because the seat's closer. Yeah, so the small person sits on the inside and the seat's a little bit closer around yeah, so the pedals so they can reach. Hopefully it won't end up like that train ride that we had in Eftling, where uh, we were absolutely tired out by the end of it. So yeah, it should be good fun. Yeah. Ooh, hypnotic smile always. Yeah, so we sit in the seat and pedal. I'm pedaling. Come on, Katie, get those legs working. Wait, stop pedaling. Oh, we're going down. Pedal, go higher. Yeah, so pedal, go higher, stop, stop pedaling. And Wait, don't pedal. Wait, down don't. we go. Up, oh, back up. Oh, we can't pedal backwards. Then right, again, if you do pedal backwards, it goes up anywhere. Wait, will I do the frog ride? Do the frog ride? Yeah. Yeah, not quite as forceful as the frog ride with the sudden drops. Up to the top and stop pedaling. And slowly down. And back up. And back up. Yeah, it's really easy to pedal as well. Um, there's pretty much no resistance in it, so suitable for all ages. Yeah, unfortunately at Flamingoland there is quite a few rides that are uh, not actually open this year. Um, one of which is... Dino Roller, which is essentially a caterpillar coaster, but in the shape of a dinosaur. 
Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Um, there's a whole area just over here as well where there's various things such as flip-flop, which is not open. Um, there's a splash battle over there as well, which unfortunately isn't open. And I'll hopefully get some shots later on. There is a big log flume, but unfortunately that's not open either. But still, it's all well advertised on the website and yeah, it, it's what you expect. But yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Katie did actually come to from England earlier in the year. Um, it was during the school holidays, if you can call them school holidays. All the schools are shut anyway. Um, but yeah, it was a really busy day, so thankfully today it's not that bad. So, there's a runaway mine train coaster here, which we'll surely get on at some point. And also Zoom as well, which is a kids suspended coaster. So here's a look at the runaway mine train. The Zampola family coaster, opened here at New Land in 2007, but before that it was at Full of in Warren, and before that it was at the American Adventure Theme Park. Nice two lap special. Special. Yeah, so there's a look at flip flop, which uh, unfortunately isn't open. You already said that. And there's a spot battle. You it looks really that. good, but uh, like I said earlier, just not operating this year. It seems to be all the water rides, to be honest, along with a few of the smaller rides. But yeah, the big courses and everything's still open, so yeah, really good fun. It's a nice themed area around here. It's a sort of splash area over here for the kids as well. Unfortunately today uh, it's a little bit on the chilly side. Seems like it's the back end of September. I didn't go on the ship, I'm going in the ship. Well, just make sure you don't get wet. Okay, okay. I'm going to change the clothes. Around here for the kids if it was a nice hot sunny day. Unfortunately, that's not today. I'll attack you. Ah, water cannons. Thankfully, they're not on. Oh, turn them on, please. I'm going to go. I'm going to spend that. There's Mumbo uh, Jumbo just over there. And this next bit is Kamau. So I've gone Voodoo, which is the park's pirate ship. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 
them. Why? So as we mentioned earlier, some of the rides are open only certain times of the day. So we've just been on Voodoo, where the sign here says that the ride is open from 2pm till 5pm every day. But as you can see, it's 12.42. So yeah, it's a little bit strange. Unfortunately, the park's SNS Shop Tower cliffhanger isn't open today. Which is a bit of a shame. I've been on it before though, so it's not too bad. It's not too possible either, but it's good fun. Um, there was actually a rumour that this was going to be relocated to Scarborough at some point, so I'm not too sure if that's still going ahead or not. But we'll just have to see what happens in the future. See in the background that uh, nice big cobra all there, and further in the distance is the lift hill. It is actually a new coaster here at Wonderland, which was due to open this year, but unfortunately, due to the situation in the world, they haven't been updated open yet. It's an Inamin 10 inversion coaster, a bit like Colossus at Thought Park, but it's the version 2, so it'll be really good to get on when it does find the open. It looks like they may have one of the entrances here. Um, you used to just be able to walk through here to get towards another section of the park, but it's all currently fenced off. There's a nice little tunnel under there, and I think you can get from the other side as well. But yeah, as soon as you come in the park, you can see this magnificent structure. But uh, yeah, should be up next year. At the moment, it's currently unnamed, so we'll have to wait and see what it does get called. So here's a, another look at that it's a Inman 10 inversion coaster. So you see the lift hill in the distance. Yeah, I'll drop down there, go through the vertical blue. There's the Cobra roll. Uh, just to the left there is the four heartline rolls. Four final heartline roll. Going back at the station. So yeah, really looking forward to getting on that once it does open. It'll be the, the biggest coaster here by far. So yeah, it should be really, really good for the park. So you see there on the coaster, there's a couple of sections where it actually goes underground through a couple of tunnels, so yeah. Nice elements. There's a bit of a look inside the station. Can't see much in there, there's nothing in there at the better look at the far part line roll. There's a look down there as well, so... Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what theme they go with for the ride. Rather than just construction site. So yeah, should be really good fun.
Yeah, so we just had our ride there on Velocity, which was the Parks for Coma booster bike coaster. Yeah. Opened in 2005. So, yeah, really good. What do you think, Kelly? I thought it was really good. I didn't snap my neck last time. Yeah, it's a launch coaster. Um, really good, really intense. Nice couple of airtime hills, a couple of intense uh, turns and helixes. So, yeah, it was really good thrills. Smooth. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. Um, it's had a, a repaint as well recently. Yeah, so, very bright. Yeah, so nice bright right track and nice painted uh, bikes. So, yeah. My overall rating of it is probably 10. A 10? Yes. Wow. First 10 of the day. Oh, well, I'd maybe give it a, an 8. Um, it's a good coaster, but um, there's, there's better ones out there. But yeah, really good ride. Yeah, so also here at Flamingo Land is a zoo. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a sea lion show which we're about to go and see, so we'll put some footage of that in. And before that, there's a tiger. Just having a nice roll around and a relax out in the grass. So yeah, we'll go and watch the sea lion show and we'll see you when we come out. We have got sea lions, not seals, and during the show we will teach you the differences just to help you to identify whether you're looking at a sea lion or a seal, as they are different animals and people do get them a little bit confused. Now we've got four here, we've got four males, and that's what is called a bachelor group. So California sea lions, this is what we've got here, they're all California sea lions, they're the same species. As their name suggests, they can be found along the coast in California. They can also be found along that same coast, as far north as Canada, and as far south as the Gulf of Mexico. So if I take Marvin for a walk with me, you'll see how he can put himself up on those front flippers, and he can effectively walk on all fours. He can tuck his back ones up underneath him, a bit lazy sometimes he'll just treat them like he's doing now but he can move around he can jump he can climb quite easily that was a lovely demonstration <laughs> Marvin does an exceptional impression of a seal so in a second he's going to show you how a seal moves on land are you ready Marv? Do you want to come down and show everyone? So a seal it's just how they'll move around on land <laughs> So as you can see there, we went and saw the sea lion show, it's really good fun, mm -hmm. very educational and uh, yeah, that sea lion, what was it called Kelly? 
Mar Marvin. Yep, Marvin. Really yeah. well trained. Really yeah. good tricks. We also got some pictures with him. Yeah, we also uh, got a photo with him as well. So yeah. Put right there, so you cannot see our faces now. Yeah. So after the sea lion show, we're now going to go and have a wander around the zoo. Sure. Let's see what animals we can find. Here's a look at some of the merchandise available in the zoo shop. Horse, give me a horse. There's different flushes. There's probably a pig. Yeah, some things for, for babies. Oh my god. The mighty white pen. Mighty white pen. Some flamingo on mugs there. Some gloves. Some uh, children's clothing as well. Some land branded. Uh, some some mingle land pushes as well. A lot of pandas. The problem is no pandas here. various animal themed posters, <gasps> little jetters, you can't tell on the camera but it's got a 3D effect. Mm -hmm. Land branded Kiras, and some lanyards, mm -hmm. and some generic animal clearings as well. Right, so put that on. So, so, so. No? You can see it from different angles. So, you're going to land that way there. You can turn it around. How is that made? It's 3D. How is really that? Really nice. I want one of them. Also, along here, we've got some toys for the kids. Various. There's also Different. pet lip balms, which is Water, nice. things, some snow globes, and some animal themed ornaments. <laughs> and don't forget the flamingos. And here's an animal pick and mix. I don't think you can eat them. Oh, you can't eat these little plastic animals? They're called for like collectors. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. So you just get yourself a bag, fill them up, select which ones you want, seal them up. So you can get six for two pounds seventy-five or ten for four pounds twenty-five. Small pushes along here. Followed by some more toys. Now Sally's part out here isn't the longest. Sometimes they're linked to it, but it can make them really seriously ill. So, Sally wants 
to show you what to do if you have any litter whilst you're here at the zoo. So please, if you drop it like I did just carelessly, very well done. If you can make sure you do pick it up, you put it into the nearest bin as well. Can we see another one, another action replay of that, just to make sure we get the message across? So put it in the bin, if it has a lid, make sure it closes the lid as well, so it can't blow back out. That was very good, you can have a round of applause for that, because that was very well done, Sally. Now some parrots, as I'm sure you know, can be incredibly chatty. Sally herself isn't a massive talker, you sometimes can get a croaky hello out of her, but that's as chatty as she likes to be. So instead, just to make sure that this message is really clear, she's written a banner for everyone just so you do know what to do with any litter you have whilst at the zoo. Please do make sure you've been it. Very well done to Sally, thank you. That was a very lovely demonstration. And she's going to pop herself backstage. Now we're going to move on to a slightly different bird now. You might not have seen anything like him before. He's a little bit of a mischief, so sometimes things can go terribly wrong when he's out here. But we're going to hope for the best today. Now his name is Gremlin. He's going to appear from over here in his little cave. Now Gremlin is what is known as a red leg or a crested Serena. <laughs> Serenas like Gremlin, they can be found in South America throughout different parts. Now you'll notice the first thing everyone notices about Grem is his lovely big long legs. These big orange legs mean that he can run at speeds of up to about 15 miles per hour if he wants to. Serenas like Gremlin, they can fly, they can do short bursts if they really need to escape a predator or something, but they do much prefer to run. His legs also make him a very good jumper for the same reason. So if he wants to nest somewhere up high, or in the tree to be away from any predators that lurk below, then he can jump, he can use those long legs, and he can jump high up into the trees. Very well done. We'll try one more, because that was a really good one. Good boy. Now he can jump up to about 10 feet tall. I'm obviously not 10 feet tall. And he's not really given me a chance to stretch much because he's so keen, but that was really good. Well done, Graham. That was amazing. Oh. Now, he'll jump up high into the trees or run away to escape any potential predators. However, Gremlin himself is also a predator. Serenas are omnivores, so they'll eat a variety of things, uh, one of which could include a snake. So, Gremlin's hopefully going to show you what he would do if he was a Serena in the wild and he encountered a snake. He'd pick it up just like that and he'd bang it on the floor. That was an excellent demonstration. So the reason he does this is a couple of things for him. So, yeah, well done, good boy. So firstly, by banging it on the floor, it stuns the snake. Well, he'll give it any prey. It stuns them and stops them turning around and having a go back at him. As you can imagine, a snake bite, even from a non-venomous snake, could be incredibly painful. And from a venomous snake, it could be fatal for gremlin. So by banging it on the floor, he stuns it and he stops it being able to bite it back. It also has another purpose. So Serenas, they generally won't chew their food, they don't have any teeth. Sometimes you can see he's standing on the snake, they will sometimes tear bits off it, but generally they do store their food whole. So by banging it like that on the floor, he actually breaks up the bones in his spine and he makes it easier to chew, uh, to swallow, meaning that he doesn't have to try and struggle to do it whole and to break it up. Now he's done some excellent demonstrations out here. Hopefully, this might all go incredibly well, and he might remember how to pop himself off stage. If he can remember where he's going, if he does that, please do give him a massive round of applause. He's thinking a lot. Do you want to give everyone a hello? Lovely. And another one. Hello. And basically, what she's going to do is she's going to show you that she can put all the pieces back into the right places. Now we've trained always to do this, so when we first trained it, we made it nice and easy, oh, almost. We put them right in front and we point to her to tell her where to put each one. If she gets this last one, give her a round of applause. Did you make yourself a good Well done. So we trained her to do this, and as I said, once you've learned to do things, you want to make things a little bit more difficult, a bit more challenging. So you don't always want to train the same thing, think of you the same, if you were doing the same thing yourself, it would soon become boring. So once Olive's learned to do this, we have to make it a bit more difficult for her. So as best as I can, I'm going to move it as far away as I can, and I'm going to muddle up all the shapes as well, so that they are a completely different random order. I'm going to pop her on the table and step away, so I'm not even pointing or helping, giving her any ideas at all. She can still do this very well, whenever she's decided she's finished chewing that peanut, she will do it. So she can do this because of her colour vision. So parrots have excellent colour vision. Are we okay? Shall we try again? What are we doing? We'll have another reset. So parrots do have excellent colour vision, and it means that she can actually 
see colours that we can't detect. So they can see colours that are on the UV spectrum um, that we can't even pick up, and it means that they actually are exceptionally good at identifying different colours that we would just see as the same. When we see colours, uh, we have them too. You have these things in your eyes, a cell called a cone cell. Parrots have an extra one, which is why they've got like, amazing colour vision. So as you saw there, we just went and saw the bird show, which was really good, wasn't it, Kelly? Yes. We also got a rare tail feather. We made a donation. 
Yeah, so we made a donation and we got a tail feather from an eagle. Yeah, and it's really rare. Yeah, can't remember exactly what sort of eagle it was, but uh, yeah, really down below bright red all. orange colour. Um, so yeah, really nice. Comment down below. Yeah. So next up, we're going to go for a wander around Muddy, Muddy Duck, Duck Farm. Farm and see what we can see. There are some Shetland ponies over there. I think yeah, so just outside here, there is some Shetland ponies over there. I don't think I can make them canter. Yeah, Katie won't be able to ride those ones. A little bit too small for her. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll have a look around Muddy Duck Farm and see what animals can be found there. Yeah.
can see there's a log flume, which uh, unfortunately isn't open this season. A good shot of Kamali in the background, the mumbo jumbo. Cliffhanger, the drop tower. And there's the new course there. Yeah, so the SNS shot tower did open. So, yeah, on the website it wasn't listed as being open, so yeah. It's different because last time I went it was like open. Wait a minute, Oh, you don't need to hold on. It's only an SNS shot tower. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens if this does go to Scarborough, what they end up getting to replace it. Woohoo! Airtime! And it's going to be drop time. Yeah, it was running quite forceful there. Really good, really good ride. inside the main gift shop. Oh my god, this is so soft. Feel this. The fur. Yeah, it is quite soft. Mm. I'm quite sure if that's the price for it or not. Uh, maybe that price there. But, uh, look around. So yeah, again, mostly just generic. Merchandise. Oh, yeah. Got some face masks there. Plenty of toys and things like that. <laughs> All pirate themed. <laughs> some Peter Rabbit merchandise. Oh, that feels so nice. Oh, I've got my finger. It feels so nice, like. Yeah, it's one of those pin board things here. Yeah. Really good. It feels so nice. Some more pushes. <laughs> Run a bit low on those bum bum pack sweets. Again, some mugs in here. 
Where would you get that from? Large mug, says Flamingo Land, but this is quite a nice one. Yeah. Flamingo Land with the flamingos and the lions on, on the tree. We should get this. Wait, no, giraffe. Oh, okay. We'll get no. that for Dan. No. Got flamingos, rhinoceros, giraffe. That's a nice range of fridge magnets as well. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, my. It's over here. Oh, that's nice. with a peacock. Huh? Yeah, there's also a load of Disney ornaments as well. There's a little bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. But yeah, it's a good price. The prices are quite reasonable. Oh, the new stitch. I'm a very rich. Oh, for Grandma's birthday, we should get her that. She, she does like ER, doesn't she? Where's the G? Where's the G? What's the G for? Not J. J for Grandma. Wait, no, J. K. J. Nah. I'm not the big one. I could get the R. Nah, la. Even Harry Potter related merchandise. Gringotts, snake, Potter, Hermione. Potter. A bit further down here, well, we got some cheap. more Peter Rabbit merchandise, which is really nice. Including some Christmas baubles as well. And then we've got the really nice animals. Yeah. There's some more ornaments here with various Whoa. different animals. Again, shame some of this isn't. Mango Land branded. Look at that, that's really nice that one. That one is the other one. Yeah. They're really nice. And then, dragons. Ra. Ra, ra, mama. Again, gloves there. And then some Flamingo Land branded caps. Yeah, so that's the end of our day here at Flamingo Land. So yeah, really good. Um, operations are quite smooth. We managed to get on plenty of rides. Queues weren't too busy. Weather held out. So yeah, we really just good. We went to the gift shop, as you can see. Uh, I got this, and also, do you want to show what you got? Yeah, I just got another pin badge for the bag, so really good. Katie managed to find herself a metal slinky as well. Yay. So yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it should be good fun. Yeah. But yeah, with the pin badge, it's that one now. So, unfortunately, it doesn't actually say Flamingo Land on the badge, but it is a badge of Flamingo, so it'll do. Um, yeah, really good. What would you say your best ride of the day was, Kayleigh? Um, probably. Okay, Mumbo get, Jumbo. Get, get, get your arm out of your face. <laughs> Mumbo Jumbo. So, Mumbo Jumbo was your favourite ride? No, I've got three um, Hero and Kamali. I said that right. But what about Velocity? You give Velocity a 10 out of 10. How is it for Velocity? Yes, I'm supposed to. Oh, no, you're playing with it! I'm just picking it up here. Come on. <laughs> Trying. So, what was your favourite ride? Mumbo Jumbo, Velocity. And Kamali. Yeah. That's all the main ones? No, and Hero. And Hero. Right, so you liked all four of them. Yeah. All four solid rides. Um, probably wouldn't include Hero in that list, but uh, counts as a credit. Um, had to be done. But yeah, really good day today. And. There'll be a bit more footage on Kaylee's channel over on yeah. Capital K, and um, so we'll put a link to that below in the description. So some more zoos, like some pictures that I took. Yeah, so Kaylee's will be full of photos and things um, from our little walk around the zoo. So yeah, really good day. So I think that's going to be about it, isn't it, Kaylee? Yes. Anything else? Uh, this linky goes to the floor. Yeah. And if it's taller than me and yeah. taller than my dad. When he stretched out fully. Maybe, but yeah. yeah um, Thanks very much for watching, guys. Kelly's just disappeared. Ah, there she is. <laughs> so, it's a bye from me. Say bye, Kelly. Bye, Kelly.